Did you want to change tracks in life or professionally? Did you want to learn a new trade, new skills, or just become a different person? It all feels very daunting. It feels like it takes years to do it. But I'm here to say that this is not the case. We used to think that learning is quite a linear thing that takes many years and a lot of effort. But I believe in a different way of learning, a non-linear way. So what is linear learning? I look at it as a pyramid form of learning. This is the conventional way we learn at school and university. We start with some base foundational knowledge, then we add more intermediate knowledge and add further and further layers until we reach the summit, which is usually being specialized into something. And um, basically, you are dedicated then to, that, to those matters as a professional. Um, we also follow this pattern in, in personal endeavors, actually. But when I look at new forms of learning, which will allow us to reinvent ourselves multiple times in our lives, I look at it more as pieces of Lego. So let's say you have this piece here, and this piece here, and these pieces here. You can start to build a structure on top of it. And you don't necessarily need, at this level, to know everything here in between. You just know enough to build your structure and go further up. And there are different levels and different forms, perhaps, of knowledge. But just you keep on building and building until you reach your goal. In this video, I want to delve deeper into non-linear learning. First, I want to talk about why it is ideal for adult learners. Second, I want to talk about the key principles that help us think about this new way of learning. And third, I want to share practical implementations and examples of how we can do this on our own. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Alex and I have started this channel to help people change tracks professionally and in life and reinvent themselves. I used to work in finance and I've spent 12 years in investments before reconverting to programming over a number of years and more recently reconverting again to being a creator and writer. In this channel I want to share what I have learned and I want to help other people reinvent themselves and live the lives they want to live. So if you're curious about these topics, please subscribe to my channel and join me for more content on these topics. There are two main reasons why nonlinear learning is perfect for adults. First of all, nonlinear way of approaching learning is closer to real world problems. So it's not just about how we structure our learning over long per longer periods of times. This is also about the tactical aspect of learning really dedicated units of knowledge. In the traditional linear way of teaching, we usually present information, let the student digest, then present some problems and templates of how to solve those problems, and basically ask the, the, the students to replicate implementing those templates. But in the real world, things are not as clean cut. We always are confronted with situations that are either a little bit or a lot different from what we learn in books. It's then up upon us to find new information, to find what's the variation, how we can adapt and basically problem solve. Nonlinear learning teaches that from the get-go in terms of solving problems and being proactive in terms of getting coaching or uh, checking information with credible sources or other peers. The second element of why nonlinear learning is great for adults is that unlike kids, adults come already with some life experience, with some uh, baggage of knowledge, with clearly defined personalities and pref a preference to do things in a certain way. In a nonlinear way, as we will see later in the video, the responsibility for organizing the, the study pattern is on you, the individual. You are responsible to organize both at the overall level as well as at the smaller level what you are going to learn. And this implication means that most adults are more motivated than to go through passive 
curricula and um, lose track of why they are really doing this learning. By doing this non-linear type of learning, adults can also configure what they learn to suit their skills, but also their objectives. And each individual, after a certain moment in life, is quite different. So it makes a lot of sense for adults to learn in this way. So, now let's look at the key principles that we need to think about when we learn in a non-linear way. Non-linear learning has five key principles. The first one is seeking difficult uh, active learning rather than easy passive learning. Here there's an interesting study done by Harvard. They took an undergrad physics class and divided it into two groups. The first groups would just follow lectures and be tested at the end of the period. And the second group would, in addition to lectures, have more interactive sessions with uh, the teachers, uh, would have demonstrations, and would have much more continuous testing. Uh, and what they found out was quite interesting. The first group was feeling really good about their learning uh, patterns, uh, whereas the second group felt like they were struggling and that it was quite a difficult period. But the results were pretty clear. The second group outperformed the first group. So struggling is part of learning and actually the easy type of learning that we see sometimes with just video packed courses, that's actually misleading. And this illusion is called the fluency illusion. The second uh, principle is uh, that we need to work on projects that resemble as much as possible the real world. Um, the real world is quite messy. There are never situations which are very similar to the templates and the examples we see in, 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 in during learning. And so the quicker we can get into situations which are uncomfortable, where there is no clear paths, the quicker we get used to seeking information, seeking what are the possible alternatives, and basically problem solve. The third uh, principle is reflective learning. This is in, essential, in a sense means uh, stopping from time to time, uh, and it can be over sh short periods of time, like 15-20 minutes after you've done a learning session, and really reflect on what you've learned, summarize it to yourself, either in written form, uh, or saying it uh, in, in a blog post, for example, or even better, explaining it to a peer or to someone who is completely not in your uh, area of, of study. And this is the Feynman technique. This is the ultimate proof that you have really uh, internalized that knowledge and it can communicate it to someone else and they kind of understand most of it. The fourth uh, principle is having really constant and, and fast feedback. Uh, we, we learn the best when we really make mistakes and then someone tells us um, those about those mistakes. Um, in certain cases in linear learning, we are only getting the feedback after a few weeks of learning or months, or in my case, in my master's degree in finance, after a whole year of learning, which is, by the way, quite nerve-wracking because everything is on the line on that particular uh, period of time and there is no... Uh, alternative or recourse. So seeking feedback as quickly as we can with coaches or other peers um, can uh, enhance our nonlinear learning pattern. Fifth, interleaving practice. In, es in essence this means to mix and match different uh, uh, categories of learning uh, and not to stay stuck in one particular topic but to, to, to go and see how can this knowledge um, be uh, used in different areas. So for example, if you're learning mathematics for a, um, um, a STEM type of uh, session, um, it would be quite useful to really go and read the mathematics books or resources that explain this concept and see them applied in other areas than your, your area. Um, and then contrast, is, are there some angles that are actually presented in, for example, in biology or in um, programming that may not be usually um, expressed in physics, for example. Uh, that's so that, uh, because our brains love to see patterns and if they see the same pattern in different areas, they can remember better and uh, certainly 
um, remember the essence of those tools or of those bits of knowledge that we are trying to learn. All right, so now let's talk about key implementation considerations. So, first of all, I would like to point out that you are the master of the study plan. Do not expect to find neat study plans which will show you what to do in the next 6 to 12 months. In, in fact, avoid all of these because these are implemented across a lot of people and it may, they may not suit you. Instead, take it as a discovery exercise where you do one or two steps, you do real-world problems, then you discover what are the gaps that you need to fill in and you go and retrieve them or you seek feedback and you create this very short-term plan for the next few days in your learning process. This is much more effective, much more adaptive and also is much greater for your motivation because again you are in charge, you see where you're going and you decide where you're going. Second important aspect is to avoid the very easy learning materials. Lots of courses are only video based, usually quite long videos. This, is, this may seem easy, but this is not effective, I can guarantee you. Avoid also pieces of knowledge that oversimplifies things. It might be good as an introductory way, but don't shy away from delving deeper and being confronted with the challenges, with the struggles. This is how you gain a new level of understanding. It, it, it often happens with people who try to, to learn quantitative things where the mathematics can be a little bit overwhelming. But the wealth of resources we have currently means that there are ways to go one level deeper and understand. It's just about effort and time spent and, and, and creativity in finding alternatives. Third, and I think quite, quite important, is to avoid memorizing. With the advances of AI, where knowledge will soon be at our fingertips, this means any facts that you need to solve a problem will be available very easily. Concretely, for example, when I work with programming, I look up a lot of times functions or specific items and I use AI quite quite a lot to complete my programs and to do parts of my, 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 my programs. Now of course we have to double check this information and we have to be basically the general not the foot soldier. As a general we are responsible for the outcomes and that's what we aim for. We are not the foot soldiers that need to do all of the work uh, on the field. Thankfully we are at a stage in, uh, in, in, in life where we can basically not memorize things but really focus on solving the problems, getting to an outcome and result. So these were the three key practical implications that I wanted to share. These, these helped me uh, learn a lot and I hope these were useful. Now if you are coming from an analytical background and you want to reconvert into a creative uh, area. Uh, this is a journey that I have uh, undertaken recently and I have a video where I talk about uh, aspects of this. So check it out if you are interested. And if you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. I will share more content to help people reconvert and reinvent themselves. Thank you for watching. Take care.